Imagine East Africa in the year 2040. The size of the reserves where animals lived in the past have been reduced by half. Farmers have gained ground and now encroach deeply into the wild territories. Large migrating herds that roamed here just 20 years ago are gone. Sometimes we can spot groups of elephants, some scattered zebras, a few lions. The other big cat species have disappeared. And in 2040, there's another black letter day. Tragedy has befallen the last representative of an emblematic species. It was the tallest animal and certainly the most graceful. The last giraffe is dead. Our story is about the imperiled survival of the last remaining herds of giraffes, the queens of the savannah. For this, let's return to 2016, when we first learned that giraffes were threatened with extinction. We are in southeastern Kenya, in the Tsavo Reserve, the oldest and largest animal reserve in Africa. Here, 4,000 giraffes still roam the savanna and enjoy the grassy hillsides of one of the world's biggest sanctuaries, two million hectares. But this territory, so peaceful in appearance, is a paradise living on borrowed time. The giraffe population in Africa has declined by 50% in 30 years. Victims of poaching, the giraffe is viewed by local populations as interesting game, a kiloton of meat on two legs. But the main threats to this animal are more insidious. Little by little, the territory is being invaded by humans who settle here. Animals must retreat to ever smaller spaces and fight over resources such as prey, but also water, which is vital to all. Water that due to climate change has become more and more rare. With the first rays of sunshine, that is exactly what this giraffe is looking for, a watering hole. It's September, the end of the dry season, At four meters tall, this female has an unobstructed view. She leads the way for a small herd of Maasai giraffes. We recognize them by their coats, spotted the colors of the savanna. The patterns from one individual to another are never the same. Each giraffe has their own identity, like a zebra's stripes or a person's fingerprints. In their search for water, giraffes travel in herds, often numbering from two to 10 individuals. We still don't know if the composition of these herds is random or if giraffes create social bonds. It hasn't rained on the reserve in two years, Kenya, like elsewhere in the Horn of Africa, regularly faces extreme climate phenomena. These lands are currently experiencing the worst drought of the last 60 years. The giraffe herd must travel tens of kilometers each day. The female leading them appears particularly determined. She has good reason. She is expecting a baby, so finding water is crucial. Today she's lucky. The group has just found a stream that's not yet run dry. The female hesitates before lowering her head. When they drink, giraffes are extremely vulnerable. Like her congeners, this pregnant female knows the danger. Several zebras watch from a distance and wait to see if the area is safe. This male is taking a risk by drinking first. 
Reaching the ground is no small feat. In this bent over position, these giants are at the mercy of predators. A lion could jump out and attack their necks. The giraffe must first spread its legs so that his head can tip down five meters. You'd think the blood would rush to his head, but it doesn't. The giraffe's heart weighs 14 kilos, giving him the strength necessary to circulate blood through his two meter long neck. His heart rate is 170 beats per minute, more than double a human heart rate. The reason zebras frequent giraffes at watering holes is because they feel safe around them. Watch guards of the savanna, giraffes can see up to two kilometers in the round. The carcass of a young buffalo lies near the stream. And where there's a cadaver, predators are never far away. These lions have also come to drink. There are more and more of them in the region. For the moment, they have found something to quiet their hunger, a lucky break for the giraffes. Lions are the main predator of large herbivores. Other predators include hyenas and wild dogs. Savo is the only place where these mainless and particularly aggressive lions live. It's their territory. giraffes has moved off. Away from the group, the female prepares to give birth. Since the mother gives birth standing up, the baby giraffe enters the world by dropping from a height of more than two meters. She carried him in her stomach for 15 months. Let's call this newborn Twiga, which means giraffe in Swahili. Twiga already weighs 50 kilos. It's difficult to find his balance. He has to get stable footing on his front legs before lifting up his still rigid backside. By licking him, the mother claims her little one and urges him to stand up. His survival depends on it. The calf must stand on his own in less than an hour to reach his mother's teats. Otherwise, she will abandon him. And there's no time to lose. Predators are nearby. He did it, but he's not out of danger yet. Ever since giraffes have been categorized as vulnerable on the long list of endangered animals, every birth is an event. Cause everything changes and we are bound to old. A few days later, Twiga has already grown. He is now almost Every two meters tall. And At age seven, he'll reach his adult size. It's not the same each millisecond. He still has his umbilical cord, 
but he's finally gotten control of his long legs. Giraffes have a particular way of walking. They have an ambling gait, meaning when they walk, they lift both hooves on the same side together, just like camels and bears. It's Twiga's first time meeting elephants, and not just any elephants. These are called red elephants, and they are only found at Tsavo. In the bush, elephants and giraffe rarely stray far from one another. Twiga watches this ritual with curiosity. It's quite a show. Elephants get rid of parasites by spraying themselves with this red dirt that contains laterite. It's what gives them this distinctive color. These pachyderms are impressive. Instinctively, the giraffe calf keeps his distance. Something strange is happening. One, two, then three birds perch on the calf's fur. These are oxpeckers. They love eating all kinds of harmful insects that their host can't get rid of, like ticks, fleas, and lice. Twiga clearly isn't used to these strange birds yet. Twiga's mother likes them just fine. Over time, they've learned to live together. Adult giraffes live in symbiosis with passerines. In the end, they are quite useful. They also clean wounds, doing a very thorough job of it. Disputes over choice morsels are frequent. And after they've had enough of working, the giraffe provides an excellent system of public transportation. Soon after his birth, Twigga's mother must already leave him for a few hours. She needs to find food so she can produce milk. And for that, she must travel many kilometers. Twigga is still too young to follow her. But he won't be alone. This slightly older calf is waiting for his mother to return too. During the first months of their lives, Giraffe calves live together like this, seemingly alone and at the mercy of predators. But in fact, an adult female is always just a hundred or so meters away to ensure their safety. She's like a nanny. These females have already had babies. And just like the males who live with the herd, these mothers take turns watching over the calves. From time to time, the giraffe nanny will lead the little ones around the savanna. It teaches them how to move as a group and is probably a way of misleading watchful predators.
When they meet other giraffes, the herd grows larger for a few hours or a few days. Giraffes don't live by exact rules. Families, like herds, assemble and disperse depending on circumstances and opportunities to feed. This giraffe calf wants to keep going. He breaks away from the group and continues his walk alone. His hooves encounter a different kind of terrain. A trail. It's the first time the calf has come across one. He doesn't know it yet but it's a reminder that even in the middle of the savanna, humans are never far away. These yellow flowers attract the young male. It's a change from eating grass, and it looks tasty. On his own, this young giraffe is extremely vulnerable. But he was lucky this time. He didn't cross the path of a hungry lion or a hyena on the prowl. A few kilometers away, Twigga's mother has found a leafy acacia to feed on. Giraffes love eating the leaves of this tropical tree. They eat about 30 kilograms per day, they also obtain about 50% of the liquid their bodies need from these tender leaves. Their tongue, which is 50 centimeters long, darts around to avoid the thorns. Its blue-black color protects it during prolonged exposure to the sun. Its lips are covered with long hairs that send information about the quality of the foliage. Since the giraffe doesn't have upper incisors, she grabs the acacia leaflets between her lips and scrapes them with her lower teeth. Because of the way she chews and the patterns on her coat, she has earned the name Camelopardalus, which evokes a cross between a camel and a leopard. Twigga's mother must travel up to 25 kilometers a day, but she always comes back to her little one. She breastfeeds him two to three times a day. So when she returns, Twigga knows what that means. The young calf can finally enjoy his mother's nourishing and fat-filled milk. Each feeding lasts no longer than two minutes. He won't be weaned until he reaches about 15 months. By mimetism, Twigga tries to eat the greenery, but he is still too young. He has neither the technique nor the taste buds, maybe, to enjoy this solid food. He tries to nab one last feeding, but too late. 
His mother is already on the move in search of more acacia leaves. As the days pass, they start to look the same. Well, not entirely. A squirrel scampering through the brush piques Twigga's curiosity today. It's another first for him. During their first months of life, giraffe calves are faced with a whirlwind of new encounters. Twigga and his congener have front row seats at a non-stop ballet of fascinating animals, like these dictics, Africa's smallest antelope. But the rest of the time, Twigga and his sidekick patiently await their mother's return. They stand like statues. They can remain like this for hours without moving, as if their mothers taught them to avoid attracting the attention of predators. Meanwhile, the mothers continue to search for water without respite. Giraffes need up to 35 liters of water a day. It's a tough challenge during the dry season. Along the way, Twigga's mother witnesses a sad sight. This young elephant is dying. He's not wounded. It's simply a lack of water that has condemned him. Many elephants have died at Savo since the beginning of the drought. The mother elephant tries to help her little one, but her efforts to get him on his feet are in vain. The lions are already drawing near. They are willing scavengers. Her intimidation is only a temporary remedy. The lions will return later. For this matriarch, like for Twigga's mother and her group, extreme overcrowding and the cruel lack of water on this territory have created conditions that grow more and more menacing every year. This is why giraffes are now threatened with extinction. The scars on Twigga's mother's coat are evidence that she is already tangled with lions.
So far, the calf hasn't had to match himself against predators like these. On his own, he wouldn't stand a chance. For now, he has only basic concerns, like food. Try as he may, clearly his mother isn't swayed by his cuddling. Fair enough. He'll try another route. Twiga takes off like a rocket. He canters around his mother and does a show for her. That seems to work. Finally, after months of drought, a long-awaited downpour. It's been three weeks since Twigga was born. He waits stoically for his mother's return. The skin on his neck still has the characteristic folds all little giraffes have. Twigga finally catches on to the benefits of this water that falls from the sky. He tastes it for the very first time. It's refreshing. But the oxpeckers are back. The little giraffe learns to tolerate their presence. For a change, cause everything changes, and we are bound to own. Just as he is learning to live with his mother's comings and goings. There's now the same and only second. the real and it's not always what we know we were left in peace to find how to breathe like a bird extending its breath Thanks to the rain, mother and baby can quench their thirst without moving a muscle. And this continuous change is like a migrant turn into such a disunbelievable light. And this conditioning brought us to think we possess the world and this precious. After a few cuddles in the rain, Twigga discovers another delight, kicking up his hooves in the mud. When he's older, he'll hit speeds of 50 kilometers an hour.
It didn't rain for long, but the precipitation replenished a few streams. Everyone will want some. The search for water is the main priority of all animals on the savanna. This giraffe acts as a sentinel, but a pride of lions already occupies the territory. The herbivores can't drink until the carnivores have first served themselves. It's the law of the jungle in action. The giraffe keeps a safe distance. A herd of elephants also waits to quench their thirst. In order for the giraffe and the elephants to drink in peace, they must chase away the big cats who are still hanging about. Only elephants are imposing enough to drive away the lions. The felines have lost this battle. They'll have to find another spot to settle with their family. The coast is clear. The herbivores can at last approach the oasis. Finally, Twigga's mother and the herd take their turn. The water can quickly run dry, so everyone enjoys it as they see fit. The lions didn't go very far. They killed a giraffe that was about six months old. A crowd of scavengers already grows impatient. The giraffes watch the massacre, powerless. Soon the lioness will return with her family to finish off the meal. And Twigga, he is still alive. But the lions are less than a kilometer away. 
Their roars fill the night air. To keep her little one safe, Twiga's mother must absolutely find another territory, like the other giraffe mother has already done for her baby. For the first time, Twiga will follow his mother and leave his birthplace. They will travel many kilometers in search of a safer location away from the clutches of this family of big cats. An elephant, a reassuring presence. Her little one will be safer here. Tonight, they will stay close to this herd of pachyderms. Nightfall doesn't change much for giraffes. They are the mammal that sleeps the least. An average of two hours a day, always standing, and never for more than 30 minutes at a time. By the next morning, the group has more new members. A young giraffe and his mother have arrived, no doubt searching for safety in numbers. Imitating the behavior of his elder, Twiga tries to get used to his future staple food, the infamous acacia leaves. Clearly, he hasn't yet figured out how to keep the thorns from pricking his tongue. As for his mother, she has found an ingenious way to get rid of the parasites that plague her. In this region of the savanna, Twiga discovers a new species, a herbivore like himself. He's smaller, but just as resourceful. This antelope with the big ears is a geranuk. He feeds on acacias and water-rich plants, so he can go a lifetime without drinking a single drop of water. The geranuk rises up on his hind legs and can thus reach food located two meters off the ground. This is why he is also known as the giraffe gazelle.
Twiga never knew his progenitor. Among giraffes, males leave soon after mating and don't live in families. They live in herds and remain together in order to find females to impregnate. Males are recognizable by the bump on their noses and the tips of their horns. These bony appendages covered with skin are called ossicones. On males of the species, they are hairless. There is no mating season for giraffes. Females can mate every 15 days. This male has caught the scent of a female. It's the one who arrived in the night with her baby. She's not interested. This one is more docile. The male tastes the female's urine. This behavior is called the Fleming response. It tells him if the female is ovulating and ready to mate. But to earn the right to reproduce, males engage in violent combats called necking. Combats between males are veritable duels with their necks. The males never use their hooves in these duels, but using their horns is authorized. Even if they are blunt, they can badly wound an adversary. The more clever males try different tactics, like toppling their rival. The one who is victorious earns the right to mate. Here's the summary of the life of a male giraffe. Go from herd to herd in search of partners. Fight, mate, and eat. It's been two long hours that Twiga has been waiting for his mother. Much longer than usual. He is very hungry. The mother of his congener arrives to feed her little one. Twiga casually moves closer to her. But a giraffe only has enough milk for her own young. She would never nurse a baby other than her own. Tonight, a pride of 13 lions has settled a few kilometers away. The territories have become too small for these wild species, making cohabitation more and more dangerous, especially for giraffes. The herbivores haven't picked up their predator's scent but the lions smell their prey.
Twigga's mother has still not returned. Camouflaged in the brush, little Twigga is starving. Instinctively, he tries to feed himself, but this dirt, rich in iron, isn't to his liking. The herd of females makes their way back, but they don't know that the last kilometers that separate them from their young are extremely dangerous. The pride of lions that settled here for the night are very hungry. In the early morning, they start to hunt. For these experts in surprise attack, it's easy pickings. Their first mission, get as close as possible without being noticed. This lioness has selected her prey. It's Twigga's mother. against one, she doesn't stand a chance. Twigga doesn't know it yet, but he is now an orphan. The mother of the other giraffe returns as usual to nurse her baby, but only her baby. Without the milk he needs to grow, without his mother to protect him, Twigga is doomed. His life has lasted only a few weeks. This is what happens to three out of every four giraffes today, and is also the fate of most animals on the savanna. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were millions of giraffes in Africa. Today, there are only 80,000 left. For years, all around the world, the press and scientists have reported on the many dangers that threaten the existence of elephants and rhinoceroses. Giraffes are the forgotten ones. Their extinction is happening slowly, without a sound, and in total indifference. <laughs> 